don't need to change it anymore. <laughs> Il Cyprian, so Padua Ari. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> okay, so I think we start while people still come in because it's already a bit too late. And um, so the next talk is given by Denis Vion. Um, and you have 30 minutes, and I try to give you some signal yes, yes, five please. minutes earlier. Okay? So thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as for many of you, it's my first uh, post-COVID conference. I'm super happy to be here, and I warmly thank the organizers, uh, organizers for this uh, kind invitation. Uh, the story I will tell you today is about a very simple circuit that emits quantum microwaves. More uh, precisely, it's a Josephson junction, simply uh, voltage-biased uh, in series with an LC resonator, and for a proper choice uh, of um, the voltage here, uh, you get, I'm too far or what? I get, you get uh, some uh, emission of uh, bunches of an exact number of photons in a continuous uh, way. Okay, the reason we, we tell you this story is because it, we think it is interesting uh, in itself because it, uh, enlarge the psychic QED uh, uh, subject to out of equilibrium uh, situation. Uh, but it, of course, it also uh, help uh, building the quantum computer, uh, solving uh, uh, the humanity and the global warming uh, problem. But uh, th this is not the only reason I'm telling you uh, all this. OK, so the, the PI of this work is not me. It was uh, our friend uh, Fabien Portier, who passed uh, away one year and a half ago. Uh, the work was mainly done by uh, his last uh, PhD students and postdoc, uh, uh, Ambroise Peugeot and Gerbeau Ménard, and uh, it was done in strong collaboration uh, with the groups of uh, uh, Joachim Sankerold in Ulm, and many of the simulations I will show uh, have been done by uh, Bjorn and, and Cyprien here. Here I have only uh, put uh, the uh, members of the, uh, the CA members that have participated to uh, this precise work, but I know that there were um, many more collaborators of, uh, of Fabien, uh, even in this room, uh, and, and I uh, say uh, to them hello uh, for him. Okay, uh, that said, No, someone has moved the mouse away from me. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, so the context of the study is uh, the quantum transport uh, and the production of quantum microwaves. So the problem is that you push uh, on, uh, that you push uh, on uh, Cooper pairs with a, a voltage source across a, a quantum coherent uh, conductor, and you will uh, transform uh, these microscopic excitations uh, QV here into collective excitations that we call photons in the environmental uh, impedance seen by the quantum conductor. Okay, and the relevant questions are uh, how many uh, photons, at which speed you produce them, what, what is the photon statistics, are the photons entangled, and so on. Good. Uh, the quantum coherent conductor we consider is uh, uh, the simple uh, Josephson junction, SIS junction. And I recall here uh, the IV characteristic. Uh, basically, you have a supercurrent branch at zero voltage simply because Cooper pairs can tunnel from the left to the right at the Fermi level without any dissipation. Now, the situation is, a, is a even more simpler when you put a a DC bias because nothing happened. You have no current at all. Why? Because if there, was so there were some current, the energy delivered by the voltage to EV would have to be dissipated somewhere. And there is a gap of excitation. You cannot dissipate, so no current. So 
to have an interesting situation, you have to add something. And like this uh, single uh, LC mode in the circuit uh, here, and uh, in that case, when the voltage uh, is equal, is such that the energy too easy uh, one delivered by the battery is exactly the, the energy of a photon, you produce one photon in the resonator uh, like this, and you get some current. And you can do the same reasoning uh, when the voltage uh, V uh, reach uh, two, the value for two photons, three photons in the resonator, and for any integer number of photons, you will have a resonance with a multiplet of photons being created per, per Cooper pair passing across the junction, okay? In order to understand the ingredients that govern this physics, I, I use this analogy of a, 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 an excited atom in a box with a box mode resonance with the electronic transition and an impedance of the, of the order of the vacuum impedance Z naught. And for this relaxation to occur and a photon being produced in the box, you need two things. Uh, you need first that the uh, a matrix element uh, th that depends on the atom itself. You need overlap between the electronic wave functions in the atom. This is the first ingredient. And the second ingredient is that your box has to be able to accept this energy in form of a photon. And this is uh, given by the ratio of the impedance of the mode divided uh, by uh, the uh, quantum of resistance h over e square. Uh, and uh, this forms a well-known uh, fine structure constants of 1 over, over 137 uh, for this uh, matter-light coupling. In uh, our case uh, of the circuit, uh, the, atomic, uh, ro the role of the atom is played by the Josephson junction. It's not pre-energized because the energy is hidden in the, in the battery here. The box uh, is a box, an LC mode. And once again, you have the same two ingredients. You have the Josephson energy that tells you how uh, Cooper pairs can be transformed from uh, one uh, electrode to the other. And on the box side, you have the impedance of the box, square root of L over C, that tells you uh, how much uh, the, the, the uh, photon will be uh, created easily or not. So this is, again, the ratio of the mode impedance uh, to uh, this time the superconducting quantum of resistance involving the charge of a Cooper pair. And the big difference between the two cases is that here alpha is nature given, whereas here it's rather easy to play with alpha and have a fine structure constant of one or even uh, larger if you want. Okay, so uh, Fabien has covered many chapters o o over the last 10 years uh, with many collaborators. And uh, the first chapter was to prove that uh, indeed there is the same number of photons produced as the number of Cooper pairs going uh, through the junction. And uh, this was done by Max O'Fines when he was postdoc uh, with Fabien. And uh, Max was measuring the real impedance in situ uh, as seen from, the, from uh, the, the junction. And then he could measure both the current and the microwave emission produced and check that the rate of Cooper pairs was matching the rate of photons both uh, experimentally and with the, with, with the theory, okay? So then several uh, chapters uh, were covered that I don't want to uh, detail uh, today. We, I come with the last chapter that we will cover, which is this emission of multiplets of uh, photons uh, when the fine structure constant is one. Okay, so I will tell you about the model, how we have implemented the circuit, the, um, the uh, amplitude of the emission of these photons, and uh, I will give you a proof of the K granularity, at least uh, when the power emitted is low. Okay, so what's the Hamiltonian of the system? Uh, uh, up to the vacuum energy, it's uh, H bar omega times uh, the number of photons in the resonator, if you believe in, in photons. Uh, <laughs> Um, ma ma plus the, jo the Josephson energy uh, involving the cosine of the superconducting phase across uh, the Josephson junction. Now, uh, we can use the fact that the sum of all the voltages or of all the generalized phase across the loop sum up to zero and replace the phase of the junction by the phase imposed by the bias, which is a 
linearly uh, time dependent, you see here, and the phase across the resonator, which is nothing but the position operator, A plus A dagger, uh, times this uh, matter-like coupling coefficient that I was mentioning, entering inside the cosine with the square root. So it's a very highly nonlinear uh, 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 Hamiltonian. But if I ask you what is the dynamics from this Hamiltonian, uh, you have to be a very good uh, theorist to uh, understand from this form what's going on. So we prefer to make a rotating wave approximation around the uh, different VK voltage uh, at which you have the, this production of car photon multiplet. And in that case, following a recipe that was given in a, in a paper from uh, Ashish Clerk's group, uh, you obtain a very compact and readable form of uh, this Hamiltonian. So first thing uh, you see here that um, uh, K-photon multiplet will be created. You have this A dagger to the power of K, and with the Hamiltonian conjugate, it's just parametric uh, drive uh, at, at uh, order K. So first, second, you see that the, the amplitude or, of production will be proportional to the Josephson energy here, okay? Uh, slightly renormalized by the, final, by the matter light coupling constant and also proportional to the k over two power of alpha. So better to have a high alpha if you want to fa favor the production of these multiplets. Now I have uh, forgotten an important term here, the last operator bk, which complicates the situation. Actually, bk is the identity matrix up to a larger, large number of photons if alpha is small. But here we want alpha big. So it's a big correction, and actually its analytic form is known. It's simply a diagonal matrix in the Fox state basis involving some generalized uh, Laguerre polynomials, okay? And what it does, this BK operator, is canceling the climbing of the harmonic oscillator uh, ladder uh, K steps by K steps at some N. On the higher the alpha, the lower the N at which this cancellation will occur. So we see, you see that we have two very strong nonlinearities in this system. Okay, uh, that said, you can also uh, uh, write the Hamiltonian for a voltage slightly different from the resonant voltage, and you have a slow uh, time-dependent uh, term here in the evolution. Moreover, we won't study a closed system. We will make a hole in the resonator so that the energy can leak out, okay? And uh, this leak will be characterized by the energy decay rate kappa uh, that defines the quality factor of the resonator. Okay, uh, and then I stress that uh, this uh, Hamiltonian is almost exact, uh, apart from the rotating wave approximation, so it's at all orders in alpha, and it, it, it will so include a lot of uh, feedback from the field already present uh, in the resonator on the uh, probability to have Cooper-Pers tunneling and more photons emitted. So this is the thing, and what we can do with uh, this, uh, these two objects is some Lindblad uh, master equation simulation, uh, including the quantum uh, regression theorem to have the quantum statistics of the photons uh, going out here. Okay, for those interested in fabrication, we want high Z, high L, low C, so the, we fa first fabricate on a low epsilon substrate. Second, because we want low C, we don't make any C. And we just do our resonator for a spiral coil of 60 nano -henry. and the capacitance is simply the stray capacitance to ground of this spiral coil. Like this, we reach uh, um, a frequency of 4.4 gigahertz and an impedance of two, two kilohertz, which gives uh, an alpha of almost one, okay, uh, here. Uh, the quality factor of this resonator is not at all governed on chip. It depends on the microwave elements that we put in series with the chip. And in uh, all what I will say, it's uh, between 36 and 72, so it's slow in order to favor the uh, output of the photons uh, of the their, uh, exit of the resonators, okay? Instead of making a single Josephson junction, we make a squid in order to tune the uh, Josephson energy, which is the 
the parameters that govern the amplitude with which you produce these, uh, these photons and these things. Okay, uh, a bit more details. Uh, you see that we have to uh, connect the inside of the spiral coil to the outside, and for this we deposit a brick of plastic uh, on top of which we make an aluminum bridge. Here you see uh, the uh, detail of the, of the squid. We hear uh, one of the two junctions, uh, smaller than 100 by 100, 100 nanometer, and with a, capacitive, uh, a capacitance of one uh, femtofarad. Good, then we place this sample at the bottom plate of a dilution refrigerator. Uh, we thread a flux through the, through, through the loop uh, by a, a current biased uh, small coil in the fridge. Uh, then we connect uh, to uh, a DC line, which is simply a, a voltage divider, heavily filtered and connected uh, to the resonator through a bias T so that the DC current can flow through uh, the Josephson junction, and all the microwave is directed to a measuring line through this right capacitance. So this uh, measuring line is uh, at the geometry of a Hanbury Brown and Twist uh, setup. Uh, it's a trick known from the 90s uh, that allows to measure properly very, very weak signal and to get rid of the added noise by the amplifiers because you uh, duplicate your signals on two lines and then you amplify uh, it uh, twice on the two lines and of course the noise of your amplifiers is uncorrelated and, by, and you can calculate autocorrelation by measuring intercorrelations on two lines and you get rid of, of lots of the uh, uh, noise. And then what you measure, you have two possible setups. Either you use power detector uh, to uh, know the power arriving on the two lines and you digi digitize in time at one giga sample per second this thing, these uh, signals, or you use uh, a homodyne detection with two simple mixers uh, and, and uh, digitize at the same speed. Good, so I want to go into the details which are uh, a bit tricky on how you get uh, all the correlation functions of a quantum field uh, co coming out of a resonator uh, using uh, this setup. But uh, believe me, there is a recipe. Uh, you have to uh, alternate on and off period of time where you establish VK or not, or set the voltage to zero to make the difference between certain uh, correlated noise, uh, to subtract certain co correlated noise on the two lines. And there is a, a recipe uh, published by, by Andreas Varas groups in 12 years ago by, by Da Silva, and you can follow it and, and perform the, the right calculation uh, to, uh, to get uh, these uh, correlators. For instance, uh, G1, which is simply the Fourier transform of uh, the um, uh, power spectral density emitted, or the uh, correlations, uh, the, the G2 correlators that will give you uh, the statistics uh, of the field. So I skip all the details. We operate by Fourier transform or multiplication inverse Fourier transform in, in parallel in C uh, using multiprocessing. And we have a duty cycle of about one half. So half of the time we take data, half of the time we compute things. Okay, and this is the first result we have observed. So you, the, uh, four years ago in the first run, we were measuring the, the, the light emitted in the full bandwidth of the resonator and simply scanning the voltage. And you see that where we expect at the voltage V1, V2 up to V5, we observe the peak, the peaks of emission corresponding to one, two, three, four, five photons. And, and be careful, the, the, the six uh, peak is not at all uh, K equals six. It's not at the right place and it is due to a spurious mode of the system that we could get uh, rid of in the second run. Okay, good, we see the, the phenomenon. A small parenthesis here, uh, when you scan, so here it's just for V1. We are on the first peak, uh, one photon per Cooper pair, and you see that we scan uh, the, the, the bias voltage across the uh, mode that is also measured in situ here. We see a monochromatic line following uh, the uh, V equal H nu over 2E uh, line. And this line is not absolutely monochromatic, of course. You see its width here. It's about three nanovolts. 
which corresponds to 5 megahertz when translated uh, with this formula. And this, sim this is simply the residual voltage noise, voltage noise of the source between 20 and 30 millikeds. Okay? So, the first thing we try to see is, is, is if whether we understand or not the power spectral density which is emitted by, by, the, by the system at the different voltages for uh, k equal one uh, to six. So this is the second run at a la rather large EJ value so that there, is a l there are a lot of uh, photon emitted. And here, the dots are the measured uh, spectral uh, densities in photon per second and per hertz of bandwidth. And uh, so these are the, the, the dots, actually. And they are compared in black with uh, what we uh, expect without any uh, fitting parameters. And you see that uh, it corresponds more or less, except for k equal one, for the very same reason I just told you, there is voltage noise. And here the simulation assumes no voltage noise at all. Okay, but so often the peaks are, uh, the experimental peaks are a bit uh, smaller than the, or, or significantly smaller than the uh, simulation, but when they are smaller, they are wider. But all what counts is not the shape of the peak, but the amount of photons, so the integral that is shown here in, in cyan, uh, below each peak. Note also that we have to subtract a spurious contribution of another mode in the environment for k equals six. But when we count this number of photons per second emitted, this is what we get. So here you have a comparison between the data and the uh, simulations without any noise um, by a Lindblad master equation. So you see that we vary the Josephson energy by almost one order of magnitude, okay? And over more than three orders of magnitude, we have a reasonable agreement uh, for uh, this uh, photon rate on the six peaks of uh, emission. So here you see the heat in absolute value. So we emit between one million and one billion of electrons per second. And in terms of occupation, in the resonator, it's super small. You see that the number of photons inside the resonator, in average, is between 10 minus three and at, at, at most two, three photons, even when you emit one billion of photons, because the Q is low, so the energy goes out uh, very well, very quickly. Good. Uh, now, uh, could we reproduce these results by simple formulas? So than, uh, use, rather than using the uh, heavy uh, from uh, simulation uh, and so on? No, actually if you uh, take the dynamical uh, Coulomb uh, blockade theory of uh, the Purcell for formula we were told about uh, on Monday, it uh, doesn't work. So of course it's very simple, you can plot it. These are the uh, dashed lines here that you see. And at the beginning of course it, it works very well. Uh, for a very uh, uh, weak emission, but very rapidly it doesn't work anymore. And for instance, it does, this simple formula doesn't predict at all that uh, there will be crossing and that it's possible to emit more power at V3 than at V1. This is never predicted by this simple theory. So you have to, because alpha is big, because the number of photons in the resonator is not zero, you have to rely on full, quant uh, full uh, quantum simulation. What about the granularity, okay? Because I told you that uh, we have to, uh, for the moment, I tell you, th I'm telling you uh, there is one or two or three photons per coup per pair, but there is no proof up to now. So can we get a proof? So for this, we need to do the statistics, okay? So here I start with the st statistics of coup per pairs. So uh, the best way to characterize it is to uh, compute uh, the final factors, which are simply the variance of the number of uh, Cooper pairs having crossed the junction in a time t, divided by the average of this number, okay? And this is uh, equal uh, to uh, uh, a certain number. And now if you look at the photons, and see if you believe me that there are, for instance, three photons per, or k photons per uh, Cooper pair, now the, fato, the final factor for the photons now will be the, the same variance over average but for a new vari variable kn and it will be k times the final factor for uh, Cooper pairs. 
So if we can measure a phonon fact, final factor of k, uh, we have a, a, a proof of the granularity. Of course, it assumes that the uh, tunneling events will be Poissonian, okay, that the final factor for Cooper pairs will be one, so that you get k for the photons. So, uh, uh, so let's count the photons, but unfortunately, no wideband microwave parametric amplifiers, uh, no wideband uh, photon counter exists uh, for microwave photons. So the two doesn't exist, and we will have to uh, calculate the final factor from the correlators that we can uh, measure uh, on the light uh, going out. Fortunately, uh, the, the translation between the G2 function and the final factor is known. You just have to integrate the G2 function above one, multiply by the rate of photons and add one uh, to get uh, the final factor of the signal. The G2 being the same as I, as I have told you before. So here are the results. So here are the G2 function as a function of time for k equal one, two, three, four, okay, at a rather large EJ value, okay, and you see uh, already that uh, immediately that for k equal one, we have anti bunching and for k equal two, three, four, uh, the, photons, the photons are bunched. From this, we calculate, uh, we, we calculate the integral from uh, zero to pi, as indicated by the uh, final factor formula, and we have to plot the result. But th we did this in a round number three, where there was a uh, voltage noise, much more voltage noise than in the previous case. Instead of three nanovolts, we had 87 nanovolts. And uh, this has a big impact on both the number of photons in the resonator and the final factor, uh, and uh, it has to be included in the simulation, and for that, you better know Cyprian and, and Bjorn, otherwise you, your data never fit uh, with, with, the, with the theory. So they uh, could simulate the number of uh, photons in the resonator, which is a quantity that we measure, okay? Uh, as a function of EJ. So thanks to their uh, calibration curve, we put our, uh, we, we place our data at EJ values corresponding to the number of photons that we measure uh, in the resonator. And like this, we could obtain this fair agreement between the measured that uh, final factors in, in, in dots uh, with the simulated ones in presence of the voltage noise. So you see that the prediction tells you that indeed the final factor will reach one, two, three, four only at very low emission power and the, that then very rapidly it will depart from these uh, uh, asymptotic values. Uh, so we were able to measure only uh, down to the, this amount. Uh, it's more than one day of uh, averaging uh, per point. Uh, and uh, you see that we approach the value of one, two, three, and four uh, from the top uh, by uh, reducing EJ, even if for K equal one, we have a final factor uh, of uh, 0.7, you see? But, okay, we, at least we do understand. Okay, so we have a kind of signature of uh, this uh, K photon production of, uh, of multiplets. So it's done. So I skip the discussion of why, uh, why uh, it's going up and down in all directions like this? So if you're interested, ask me. But we also do understand why, and it's written in the Hamiltonian, why it goes up and down like this, like crazy, okay? So this I skip, and I uh, just come to my take home message. We have used a very simple circuit, circuit a battery bias Josephson junction with a simply high impedance resonator. We could observe the multiplet photon emission of this circuit in the strong uh, coupling uh, regime. Uh, we have a quantum, quantitative understanding of, of the photon rate emitted uh, and uh, a signature of the granularity uh, of the photon emission. Uh, if you're interested in this subject, there are other related uh, work uh, in optics and in microwave uh, photonics uh, by the, in the group of uh, Chris Wilson, where they produce uh, triplets by a more conventional way consisting 
in applying a, a microwave pump. And there is also a, a, an additional work, uh, not published yet, which shows uh, tens of these peaks at high uh, values, but uh, in, in a way which is not fully uh, understood. And then, on a broader view, I want to say that here, what is interesting is not this uh, particular subject, but we have ways to extend circuit QED in steady out of equilibrium situation with super strong non-linearities and strong coupling between the electrons of the charge carrier and the light. And it's a test, test bench. Please play with it. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. So we have time for some questions. I guess I potentially have several, but I'll start with one. Have you thought about like splitting the photons with multiple resonators? Yes, like this is, was one of the chapters where we have used two resonators instead of one, and we could demonstrate two continuous beams of entangled photons at two different colors on two different lines. Okay, with a decent degree of entanglement of at the DB level in terms of uh, two mode squeezing, so not super high. Other question? Yes. So this is an invited question. Why does it go up and down? <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we were not understanding at all uh, on the experimental uh, side why it was going up and down, and uh, the uh, people from uh, Harin's group told us just to look at the Hamiltonian. It's written in the Hamilton. <laughs> so uh, what, uh, what happens is that we can have two different situations. One where the field already present in the resonator uh, stimulates Cooper personally, and another situation where this field blocks the thing. And why? Uh, because uh, as written in the Hamiltonian, you have this term here, which, is, uh, which contains a stimulated emission, a dagger to the power of k. So the more photons you have in the resonator, the easier it is to produce more photons. So it produces over, uh, it, it, it produces bunching of the bunches here. So, uh, so a super Poisson uh, thing. And then the second nonlinear term here blocks the production at a certain level. And you have this competition with the two levels, which is different for the different case. And this is why you have this, uh, this uh, variation, this trans variation that we observe. And I'd just like to add to this. I mean, there is an alternative representation of this, of this operator in terms of Bessel functions, k order Bessel functions, which are normal ordered. And the nonlinearity of the Bessel function is basically what is expressed here. And that gives this up and down and this, this feedback. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so time for another short question. If somebody, yeah. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you looked at also higher order statistics of the noise? So like in our photon triplet paper, we no, see no. lots of patterns in the skew and interesting We stopped things. at G2. It's already uh, one day of uh, averaging to get a G2 uh, when at low emission. No? Okay, theoretically it's done. Okay, then, um, yeah, let's thank Denis again for the talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>